have a problem. My husband believes we've reached gender equality. Now, I can't really blame him. He truly believed that from the best possible place. He's surrounded by unstoppable women and therefore believes we all can. We developed laws, regulations, and even organizations that their whole purpose is to make sure women are treated equally. But if women represent 50% of college students, why only 4% of S&P 500 CEOs? A few months ago, I was meeting a potential co-founder for my startup. We're sitting there having coffee and a pleasant conversation. I'm telling him about my vision. He's telling me about his. And all of a sudden, he pauses. What's on your mind, I ask. And there he goes. This is weird for me. I never thought of starting a company with people I don't know. You see, I come from an elite intelligence unit. I have the privilege to start a company with people I know, people like me, people from my close and immediate circles. That really got me thinking. Why do I feel uncomfortable with this statement? On the one hand, there is nothing wrong with starting a company with people you know. When we start a company, we want around us people who will share our values and vision. But on the other hand, what if this casual sentence encapsulates perfectly the fundamental problem of gender inequality? Let's take one of the most basic examples. Toilets. Did you know that by allocating the same space for toilets at airports for men and women, women are actually at a disadvantage? Women simply need to use the toilet more. Therefore, by getting the exact space as men would, basically treating them as equals, you will see long lines out of the women's washroom and none outside the men's. Basically, trying to fit women into a world designed by men is like trying to reshape clay after it's been baked in the oven. It's super important that we try, but it's hard. Now, let's look at the picture. Since the beginning of time, men started businesses. Then those men start, hired more men like them. Those new hires hired more men and so on and so forth. Can you spot the yellow dots? How do you think it feels to be those women? Do you think it's that straightforward to be a woman in a man's world? I want to offer a different approach, an additional approach. What if there's another way? What if we stop focusing only on reshaping clay and start focusing on building new clay? We need more female entrepreneurs. We need women who start companies from scratch, from the bottom up, design it in their vision, and the opportunities will follow. And why should you care? Whether you're a woman and you care for your career, whether you're a parent and you care for the future of your daughters, and whether you're simply an employee in a company. Companies with diversified management perform 15% better than the industry median. Who doesn't want to work for a company that performs better? So how do we do that? How do we turn the glass ceiling to be the glass floor? I want to offer you three very simple steps. One, stop apologizing. Two, start your own game. And three, leverage your strength. Let's start with number one. Stop apologizing. When I met my investors for the first time, it was shortly after I gave birth to my third daughter. 
We set up a meeting for 8 a.m. in the cafe across the street, the kindergarten, her older sister rang. That morning, anything that could have gone wrong did. I found myself at 8 a.m. sitting in a cafe with a three-month-old baby next to me, waiting to meet investors, one of which I'm meeting for the first time in my life. And sure enough, as we sit there and talk, my baby starts to cry. And I find myself standing up, preparing a bottle, jumping up and down, trying to calm her, while continuing to talk about the past and the future. And for a minute there, I was about to apologize but had to hold myself. Because you see, it's okay to apologize when you do something wrong, but there is nothing wrong with being a mother and having a career at the same time. <laughs> Number two, start your own game. So we've all heard about the magic that happens at the golf's at the, sorry, we've all heard about the magic that happens at the men's golf club. Now, that, does that mean that if I want to be a business leader, I need to start playing golf? Or that we need to ban men from making connections at the golf club? I don't think so. A few weeks ago, I was at my hairdresser. As he was doing his magic, I was sitting there telling him about this new company that I'm building. He said, you know what? I have another client. She's also the CEO of a health tech startup, and she's awesome. I think you should meet. So you know what I did? I texted her, saying, you don't know me, but we have the same hairdresser. Why don't we meet? <laughs> and we did. One thing led to another. She introduced me to her investors. So guys, what has your barber done for you lately? If golf is your thing, that's great. But if not, start your own game. Whether it's the hairdresser, yoga class, medipedi, wherever you spend your time and feel comfortable, the opportunities will follow. I can't tell you how many topics my investor and I clear off the table when my daughter and his daughter are on a play date. And number three, leverage your strength. Let's go back to that conversation with the potential co-founder. He said, and I quote, I have the privilege to start a company with people I know, people like me, people from my close and immediate circles. You know what I said back to him? I said, you know what? I actually believe I'm the one who's privileged. I had the privilege to start a, com a company with people I don't know. People who, by definition, come with a different background than mine and therefore are more likely to challenge me and push me forward. As women, we tend to focus on what's missing. Women will not apply for a job if they don't tick all the boxes. But at some point in my career, I realized I needed to understand what I'm good at and leverage that. That is the one key factor that led me to standing here in front of you today. Knowing what I'm good at and surrounding myself with people who complete my skill set. So stop, start, leverage, repeat. We need to continue repeating the, this circle until we start seeing the opportunities balance. Now, I started this talk by telling you about my husband. But the real reason I'm here today is for our daughters. We have three daughters, a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and an almost two-year-old. And one day, I heard my eldest daughter, when she was merely three, go up to my dad and ask, Grandpa, can I? He didn't even let her complete the sentence. He simply said, you can. And it doesn't matter what her ask was, whether it's to build a car, fly to the moon, or have another candy, in this case. The answer is simply, you can. 
We want our daughters to grow up in a world with truly equal opportunities. A world where they don't only lean in to the table, they also build tables. With people like them or not, they don't need to ask. They simply know they can. Thank you.